Making a steam plant using three Cotswold Heritage steam engines. This is part three, the three-way boiler steam manifold. And before I started on that, I went up to Blackgate's engineering because I needed some parts. And some of the parts that I needed were rivets. I'm going to be doing a bit of riveting on the steam locomotive that I'm modifying. So I needed quite a few 332nd rivets. And I'll be using these to rivet some parts to the running boards. And as you can see, I've bought plenty of these. I also bought some 1 16th rivets and some taper pins. These taper pins will go in my little plastic drawer where I keep taper pins. I almost forgot I bought a 3 seconds of an inch rivet snap. And last but not least, while I was at Blackgate's Engineering today, I bought myself a full set of metric drills. And I've never had metric drills before. They're a bit of a new thing for me. But I will find it easier to give accurate tapping sizes for the viewers. And while on the subject of viewers, I would sincerely like to thank the two kind viewers who arranged some gift vouchers for me at Blackgate's Engineering. You both know who you are, and I thank you very much indeed. And the gift vouchers bought this metric drill set. 21st century model engineering, here I come. Now it's time to get on with the three-way boiler plant job, and the first thing to do is to remove this small adapter and replace it with a slightly different arrangement. And this, by the way, is a fibre washer. I don't like fibre washers, I really do not like them. I always use copper washers. And as you can see, I've just fitted a copper washer to a double union centre. Now I'm using some Loctite 542 to make sure it never leaks, and I'm screwing it into this hole in the boiler. The thread on this small fitting is an ME thread, that stands for Model Engineering, and the thread is quarter by 40. And while on the subject of quarter by 40 threads, there is also a quarter by 40 blanking plug in this bush in the boiler. And with the help of my trusty and reliable Barco spanner, I'm removing this because I need to replace it with a check valve, also known as a clack valve. And this is where the water from the pump will enter the boiler. A check valve is just a one-way valve that uses a stainless steel ball. Very simple. The check valve lets water into the boiler, but doesn't let it out. Well, not always. Sometimes they leak. But most of the time, check valves or clack valves are very reliable. What I'm doing at the moment is trying the clack valve in position with just one washer in place. It needs to end up in a vertical position, and this is not quite vertical enough. So I try my spanner on it just to make sure, and no, it's far too tight. And a word of caution, never do this, never over tighten fittings on boilers, because the fittings are only made out of brass and it's not the strongest metal out there. The solution is either to use a crushable copper washer, or the way I do it, use a shim washer. I'm using another washer which is quite thin and it gets it nearly to the right place. So all I need to do now is apply some Loctite 542 and then screw the fitting into the boiler bush. Be very careful with this Loctite 542. You do not want to spill any of it on any of the paintwork because Loctite 542 removes paint very well. And in this clip, I'm tightening the part into its final position, using firm pressure but being gentle at the same time. This video is really about making the three-way adapter to take three steam lines out of the boiler, so that's what I'm doing now. I have a piece of square section brass bar fitted in the chuck of my Smart and Brown lathe. And this is not a normal three-jaw chuck, this is a four-jaw self-centering chuck. So it's great for holding square section material. Generally speaking, I have the four-jaw self-centering chuck fitted to the Smart and Brown, and I use a three-jaw chuck on my smaller Boxford lathe. You've just seen me centre drill the end of the piece of brass, and now I need to drill a hole all the way down it, but it mustn't come out of the other end. There's a very quick way to drill a hole to a set depth on a lathe without having to study wheels and dials and stops and this, that and the other. All you need to do is hold the drill alongside the work so you know how far the drill wants to go through, put a felt tip pen mark where you want to stop drilling, and then just drill the hole to this depth. The drill bit that I used initially to drill the hole was a 3 sixteenths of an inch diameter drill, and then using a 7 thirty seconds of an inch diameter drill, I drilled into the end of the bar approximately 3 eighths of an inch and here I'm threading the hole with a quarter by 40 tap. Then it's over to the drilling machine, and first of all, as usual, I use a centre drill on the marks that I made with a felt tip pen. And yes, I do appreciate this is not good engineering practice. 
and I would normally use the felt tip pen to blacken the surface and then use a scriber to accurately mark the part out, but I didn't bother for this because it's not really a precision part. The sequence is the same as usual. First of all I use a centre drill, then I use a 7 seconds of an inch diameter drill, and finally I thread the holes quarter by 40 threads per inch. The middle hole, by the way, goes all the way through and is threaded at both sides. The centre hole is drilled and threaded all the way through so it can be screwed onto the double union that's already in the boiler. And now all I have to do is assemble it. Three more commercial double unions, complete with brass washers and Loctite 542, completes the assembly. After which the entire three-way adapter is screwed to the existing union fitted to the boiler, once again with some Loctite 542 and a copper washer. I was lucky with this part, it just took one washer and it was in exactly the right place once it was tightened up. First of all I tightened it by hand, and then using my barcode spanner on one end of it, I tightened it into the correct position. And here it is, a three-way steam manifold to supply steam to three engines. And just so I don't damage the threads on the end, I'm temporarily fitting union nuts and union cones. But wait a minute, there's a problem, there's a hole in the end of the fitting. What I intended to do was use the blanking plug that I took out of the boiler when I fitted the clack valve. But then I thought it would be a really good idea to use the small globe valve like this. And that way it will be possible to put some compressed air into the boiler and run the steam engines on compressed air instead of steam, just for convenience sometimes. I have all the parts laid out in a line and I think the next job is to position all the components on the baseboard. But that's it for this episode. Thanks for watching, and I hope you found it useful.